tonight. Extreme cold temperatures see a code blue activated in the Spencer Gulf. And Port Augusta Gulf is prepared to hit the fairway for this year's Open Championship. From our seven Spencer Gulf studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. John Hunt filling in for Louise Huber. Extreme cold mornings have generated an emergency code blue rating across the Spencer Gulf for those sleeping rough. Port Perry social services are working around the clock to assist the York Mid-North's homeless population. Winter is here and so is extremely cold, frosty mornings. A code blue emergency alert has been activated across Wyala, Port Augusta and Port Perry. Any rough sleepers are accommodated in motel accommodation um, due to the extreme weather and in this case obviously um, you know the cold weather. Up to a thousand people are estimated to be doing it tough in the York Mid-North region. Those numbers are high um, anyway so yes we do have a, an issue around homelessness and domestic violence in the York and Mid-North. Community leaders are raising concerns these numbers could increase. The member for Frome says the current economic climate has put residents in a compromising position. It may also be uh, not afford to be able to put the heating on. Please be very considerate of those people because it is very, very trying at the moment. It's very, very cold. United Country are calling on the community to spread the word and help those who need it most. There are people in the community that might see that there is a rough sleeper, so please have a conversation with them and say that there is some um, support, especially during this cold weather. The emergency code is activated until Tuesday with some frosty mornings expected over the weekend, but staff say this is subject to an extension with more wild weather anticipated in the coming months. Please be aware that you know it, it will be publicised if it's extended. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. A 22-year-old man has been arrested after he allegedly robbed a wireless Stewart service station last Saturday night. Police attended a home in Port Augusta West around 9 last night, making the arrest. The Wyla Norrie man allegedly entered the McCritchie Crescent service station armed with a pair of scissors. He allegedly threatened and injured a 24-year-old female attendant and stole money before leaving on foot. He's been charged with aggravated robbery and assault. While a council's new waste facility is close to opening, as the city transitions to a new waste management and disposal model. Seven Spencer Golf News were given a look inside the new transfer site, with Veolia soon to take over. The countdown is on for Wyala's new waste facility to open. With just weeks to go, the final touches are being put in place. Council a few years ago awarded a, a 10 year contract to Veolia after a, um, a tender process. Costing $7 million, it's just minutes away from the city centre. It'll replace the current one at Mount Laura, which has served the community for over two decades. Once they open, um, our landfill site will, will continue to stay open for, for a one month lap over. Um, approximately while they go through some teething options so we'll run side by side for a little bit and then uh, hopefully close after that. Cars will now enter the site and pull up at the way bridge with staff ready to assist. Smaller trucks and cars will travel through one route sorting the rubbish into different bin categories. We will then shift that waste, segregate out of it what we can, recover, recycle what we can ourselves and then uh, the western will go out to um, landfill. And if you don't have time to sort through the rubbish yourself, there are other options. If you do decide you want to recycle yourself, it obviously will be cheaper if you segregate your waste into, into the different waste streams. But you've also got the option just to come in, full trailer load, ute load, truck load, whatever you've got, and tip off. But there is a cost for that. There is currently no change to curbside collection, with the current contract with Cleanway continuing until 2021. It's the opportunity to recover as much as we possibly can and um, divert as much away from landfill as we can. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Port Augusta children have taken part in a circus workshop today as part of some school holiday fun. Run by Circ Kids, the children learnt how to balance, jump and tumble. Getting involved and having these youngsters preparing to run away with the circus. We got funding to start up with this program to coming up here every school holidays and from then it's just continued because the numbers have been here every time we come up and the kids enjoy it a lot. Children learning the tricks of the trade. Hula hooping, 
poi, flower sticks, juggling. They also do all the balance stuff you can see behind me, um, standing up on the globe and all the tubes and rollerballers. And we also do mini tramp and then we'll also do some acro as well. Warming up before diving in, organisers say the job can throw up a few challenges. A lot of stuff has an easy entry point, but you have to get past that first little point to go any further and that can take a long time and a lot of falling off for equipment and a lot of mistakes. So they, a lot of, they learn a lot of patience as well. For many, this is their first class. I learnt about uh, the jumping. Graham says helping train the next generation is proving fulfilling. Just watching them evolve their skills and watching them, a lot of them like, you know, come in a bit hesitant, a bit shy and by the end of it they're just jumping and rolling and, you know, throwing their bodies around the whole place. So it's love to see their confidence boost up. Laura Milovanovic, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, a new program getting kids into nature launched in Wyala. And Broken Hill Cinema inviting local moviegoers back to the pictures. Welcome back. Wireless Cuddle Fest program continues through the school holidays, with multiple events running during the two week period. The latest activity is the Pick Stick Citizen Science program, getting children to explore the region. A fun outdoor activity, getting families of all ages out into nature. One of the activities, um, citizen science activities that we have running this year as part of Cuddle Fest is um, the Air Peninsula Pick Sticks. The aim, find the different Pick Stick photo point locations across the region. Once found, participants can take a picture and upload it to the website. It's also proving a creative way for staff at the Air Peninsula Landscape Board to monitor the species and agricultural development. Here here at the Cows Landing Sanctuary Zone, 8 Mile Creek in Wyala, we have a pick stick here to monitor um, the changes in the mangrove salt marsh habitat. It's great to involve the community on activities that they can do kind of on their own. And this one here, they download some information from the website and go straight out on site. Information on the different locations is detailed on the pick sticks website. Meanwhile, in the city, there's also a range of different school holiday activities on offer. Here at the Maritime Museum, we've got the Cuttlefish Capers free school holiday program for children. So learning all about cuttlefish and some fun fact finding uh, missions to do. Indoor lantern making at Wyala City Plaza will also be running from July 17th. We've got a cuttlefish ocean themed section and um, after the school holidays we'll actually be um, lighting those up through the main street for um, every night for a couple of weeks. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Broken Hill residents wanting to enter South Australia for non-essential reasons will have to keep waiting with no new changes to border laws with New South Wales. One Silver City business operator is urging her fellow locals to wait patiently for the July 20 reopening date. They are sitting in a really good position at the moment because of things that they've put into place in their state. So I think they've done the right thing and we just need to be patient and all work together. South Australia's Transit Commissioner Grant Stevens did say border communities were taken into consideration. But at this stage, no exemptions have been granted. The manager of the Silver City Cinema has thanked locals for their support as it reopened in the past week. A number of COVID-19 protection measures are in place at the venue to help keep moviegoers safe. After months of closed doors, Broken Hill's local movie complex is back in business. The Silver City Cinema welcoming back visitors this week with coronavirus safety a top priority. They must put their name and their phone number just in case there's an outbreak in Broken Hill or we get an outbreak here in the cinema, um, at least uh, the health officials can track everyone down. Between movie showings, seats are sprayed down with a disinfectant. When cash is handed to the staff, the staff sanitise their hands straight away. I've got markers on the floor, arrows to go in, out, this way, that way. Major distributors have been supporting local cinemas reopening across the country. With new releases pushed back to later in the year, they're allowing venues to re-show films. Films like 1917, The Invisible Man and even the remake, The Lion King, are set to be screened. 
The film, film companies um, are being really good to all the cinemas who are trying to open. So they know there's no blockbusters, but they're really willing to release all their classic and old movies. Ashton says he's taking suggestions on films that should be getting a one-time re-showing on the big screen. Movies like the crime epic Heat and sci-fi classic Alien are already booked. Screen times can be found on the cinema's Facebook page. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Stay with us. Crystal Brooks men shed gets behind the local op shop counter. And golfers from across the state preparing to play in Port Augusta. Broken Hills budding filmmakers are being encouraged to start shooting a short movie for this year's Perfect Light Film Festival. The event is still set to go ahead later in the year, with entries opening next month. Grab the camera and call action. As a filmmaker, the main reason that um, we do what we do is so that audiences can watch our stuff. So to have the Perfect Light Film Festival in Broken Hill is so great. The Perfect Light Film Festival is penciled in for early November to be once again held in Broken Hill Sturt Park. While the event itself is still months away, the opening for entries is right around the corner. Local filmmaker Jason King has previously submitted short films for the competition, saying it's a great opportunity for local talent. Everyone's a filmmaker these days and you know I'd encourage everyone who's at all interested just to get out there and see how it goes and you only have to look at some of the viral sensations to see that you don't need the amazing technology. The city's younger generation of content makers are also being encouraged to get an idea and put it on the silver screen. Jason saying with the prevalence of apps like TikTok the building blocks for short movies are at our fingertips. I really hope that we see lots of younger filmmakers putting something in for the perfect light and I think apps like TikTok are a great way to practice those skills because they make you distill that story down into 60 seconds and it's amazing what sort of stories you can tell in that time. Last year's festival winner took home $1,000 in prize money. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The Crystal Brook Men's Shed has taken over the local community op shop for the month of July. Volunteers are ecstatic to get their hands busy and raise some much needed funds for their newly built facilities. It's the community store available for fundraising and this month it's been run by the local men's shed. It's a different group every month and we were lucky enough to secure July this year. So for the next uh, three weeks now we are running the op shop to uh, boost our funds. They say it's not just great to raise money but also promote their club. A, a lot of interaction with people now that uh, didn't know a lot about the men's shed and we've got people here that will talk, speak all day long. They've only had a week in power, but members are already starting to reap the benefits. Oh, it's great. It's great. We've had so many lovely donations and people are coming in and buying lots of stuff, which is good. I think from memory we've, uh, we've made nearly $2,000 in just over a week. So uh, we're absolutely ecstatic and over the moon about it. But they don't want to stop there, encouraging Mid-North residents to get thrifty and splash some cash. We have books, we have magazines, we have DVDs, we have CDs, we have oranges, we have mandarins, we have jam, we have sausage rolls fresh today. You name it, we have it. Their new shed is nearly complete with the group to begin taking orders in a couple of weeks. Come and support us in the op shop and if you need anything done, come and ask us and we'll do it. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Port Augusta Golf Club is gearing up this weekend for one of their biggest competitions since the pandemic began. It comes as the club experiences a surge in players, with many coming out of isolation, desperate for a hit. Getting ready to tee off for this week's competition. We've got our annual men's open. It's a 27-hole event. Um, it's actually a couple of weeks later than every other year because of the restrictions we had. The event bringing in new faces from around the region with half the field coming from out of town. We've got a lot of visitors from Wyala, Kimber, uh, Roxby Downs, Adelaide clubs. The club has still been able to hold their weekly competitions but can't wait to see more players on the green. Their members have been very supportive um, but this is the big one and uh, numbers have been very encouraging. I think people have just wanted to get out and the decision to cancel this year's annual golf week has been taken back.
Players will hit the fairways from August 4th in what's becoming a staple of the calendar. This is our 45th year that this event's been running and uh, to, uh, to have to originally cancel it you know, some months ago was, uh, was devastating for us and the club. This year's season said to be a big one. The response to date has been absolutely fab fabulous. Uh, we've uh, had probably the, the biggest numbers I've seen for many, many years. Laura Milovanovic, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We check what's biting in the Spencer Golf. And we'll have the weather details with Brit. Hello again. Time to check what's biting in the Spencer Golf this weekend. Here's our fishing experts with their tips. G'day and welcome to this week's fish tips from Port Augusta's Jewel of the North. Well, there's squid everywhere. Uh, you have to be really bad if you're not catching squid at the moment. Basically, anywhere you want. A lot of Tommy Ruffs off the jetties at night. A lot of garfish in that. You get these really calm nights. A lot of people getting out there and dabbing for uh, garfish along the front of the shacks and also out in the middle banks there. Silver whiting when the tide's low, uh, out in the middle banks. Some King George whiting, they're not real, real big at the moment, but uh, there's not a bad catch. A few grass whiting getting caught in there with them as well. A lot of puffer fish hammering the baits, so uh, that's hampering the King George whiting as well. And that's all we have from the Jewel of the North. Welcome to another week around the Gold Fishing Tips. It's fantastic at the moment. We've seen this King George whiting get bigger and bigger and bigger as the, the months go by. We should not be seeing any squid, but we're still seeing lots and lots of squid out there as well. So the top tips at the moment, Woods Point, have a crack there, you'll find yourself squid and King George whiting. If you come round to Barrows Beach, have a look along there where the berry weed was. It was a little quiet a week or two ago, but they tell me that the fish are back there. Nice time to have a look over at Eastern Shoal as well, and don't forget your Third Creek patches. Have yourself a good weekend, and don't forget, take a kid fishing. Turning to Thursday Finance now, and it was an interesting day on the local stock market. Energy and resource companies had strong days across the board. Santos jumped by around 4.5%. BHP was up by just over 2%, while Carapatina owner Oz Minerals also ended the day in the green. West Farmers and Regional Express made minor gains, however Clean Seas was down. And the All Lords and the ASX 200 ended in positive territory. Both markets rose by around 0.6 of a percent. And time to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Britt. Thanks John and good evening. We woke up to another cold morning today with a low of minus 1.2 degrees at Port Augusta around 7.30. Did warm up to 17 degrees there later on in the day. At the other end of the scale, 20 degrees was the region's high recorded at Wayala this afternoon. It reached 18 at Kadena and Cleve today, 17 at Wayala and Port Lincoln, 16 at Port Pirie with a top of 14 at Broken Hill. Looking at today's satellite images, we can see patchy cloud about the Spencer Gulf, with a cold front and trough causing showers to develop. To our north, clearer skies under the influence of a high pressure ridge. To tomorrow now, northerly winds on the Gulf waters, 10 to 15 knots, reaching up to 20 knots about the south. Seas below one metre with south to southwesterly swells. And here come those showers, 14 the high for Port Lincoln tomorrow, with showers increasing. Showers at Cleve, also 14, Woodner showers and 15 degrees. A shower or two at Wyala tomorrow, 17 the top, Port Augusta showers developing and 19, Kadena showers and 14. Showers increasing about the mid-north, Port Pirie with a high of 16 tomorrow, Clare 13, remaining dry at Broken Hill, partly cloudy with a top of 18 degrees. To the weekend and we can expect more showers on Saturday, everywhere except Broken Hill, where it's looking to remain fine and partly cloudy. Port Augusta with a high of 17 degrees, Wyala and Broken Hill both 15, Woodna, Port Lincoln, Port Pirie and Kadena all 14. Sunday, showers about the eastern and lower air peninsula, as well as the mid-north. Fine and partly cloudy elsewhere. Maximum temperatures sitting in the mid-teens. And a quick look at Monday now, with fine and partly cloudy conditions forecast across the region. Which brings me to the end of today's weather segment, John. It is back to you. Thanks, Britt. And that's the local news this Thursday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later and we'll be back tomorrow night at 6.30pm. Have a great evening. Good night.